Lock and Chase was released in the arcade in 1981, with a port released for the Atari 2600 a year later. It looks familiar, not just because it's a maze game, as there were a lot of them in the early 80s, but this particular game makes no bones about where its inspiration came from. The plot is a little different, as you assume the control of a thief running away from the cops. This was long before the days of Grand Theft Auto where playing as criminals was commonplace. You hardly ever played as the bad guy back then. So that's certainly an interesting factoid, but how about the game itself? Well, like I said, it's very much following the Pac-Man formula, right down to the whole run away from enemies in a maze as you collect dots ducking into escape pods to evade them while bonus blocks appear stationary in the middle of the maze. So yeah, it definitely does tip its cap to the Lord of Maze games, but there is one unique feature, and that is the ability to close doors behind you as you evade the popo. It can actually harm or help you, as you could accidentally barricade yourself from retreating if a copper shows up on the other side. The only problem is, you can only drop these barriers in horizontal form. You can't have them facing north-south. So I guess there are no doors in this whole building that face that direction. This is understandable to a degree, because of the limited amount of buttons. It's just one button and a joystick, making it impossible to target one particular side or the other. But they still could have had the door drop in the opposite direction you're running by default. It would feel more natural as opposed to having to make adjustments when you change direction. But it does give the game another dimension. It would certainly get old a lot faster if it was simply run through the maze, collect the dots, and don't die. You also don't clear the stage after you grab all the gold, which is what these dots represent. To win the stage, you have to also exit the door at the top of the screen that was locked the whole time. I guess you have to pay a toll or bribe or something when all the gold is collected. There are no invincibility pellets, or the equivalent of, and no weapons, so you're on the defensive 100% of the time. Unfortunately, there's only one maze, so you don't get any variety in that department. But there are two difficulty variations, a fast mode, and then a slower mode where the game picks up speed as time goes on. And there's also a two-player mode, although you just take turns. It would have been interesting to have both players running around the maze simultaneously fighting for gold and slamming doors on each other. Something like that would have really taken this game to the next level. But as it stands, it's really kind of plain. It all functions well, has good controls and all that good shit, but it's not going to win any originality points, and there really wasn't enough unique aspects to make this game stand out on its own.